So by replacing the patient's blood producing leukemic bone marrow with that from a healthy donor, you can basically reboot the blood producing system, introduce a healthy bone marrow, and basically facilitate hopefully normal life in the recipient. Of course, this comes with certain risks such as that the new immune system is not fully compatible with the host in terms of the genetic differences between the new immune system and the host in which it lives now. And certain inflammatory uh, situations can result from that. We call that graft versus host disease, which is a very typical complication after transplant, where the, the new immune system starts fighting certain tissues in the patient, like the skin, uh, the gastrointestinal tract, the liver, rarely. And uh, it's actually a pretty frequent complication. It happens probably in about 60-70% of all uh, allogeneic transplant recipients. But in most cases, it can be controlled very uh, well with certain immune regulating medications, immunosuppressive medications. At some point after transplant, the new immune system gets used to the patient and this graft versus host disease inflammation fades away over time. It can take some time, it can take months, it can take even a few years sometimes. The use of high-dose cyclophosphamide given shortly after transplant, after infusion of, of the donor graft, I think it's a real advancement uh, over the last several years that, in my opinion, will make an impact on minimizing the risk of chronic graft versus host disease after transplant. The expected rate of chronic graft versus host disease is in the range of 45% maybe. And I think with the post-transplant hydrocyclophosphamide, it might go down to the range of 15 to 20%, which it's more than actually cutting it in half. We have actually some interesting studies uh, to reduce the risk of severe acute graft versus host disease here at the Seattle Cancer Care Alliance at the Fred Hutch. We are using statins, which are lipid-lowering drugs, um, which also, interestingly, have very potent anti-inflammation effects. We have actually looked back uh, a few years ago at our database and looked at donors who happened to be treated with the statin at the time they donated stem cells for a transplant. And we found uh, in this analysis, and it was actually a large analysis, more than a thousand transplants looked at, that if the donor was on a statin, the likelihood for the patient to get severe QGVHD was dramatically reduced. If we treat that donor with a statin during the two weeks preceding the transplant, we hope that we can change the aggressiveness of the donor T cells, their ability to cause GVHD after transplant in a way that this doesn't happen. Mm -hmm.